All right, folks, quick riff from me before we get to General Keene. Yesterday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen swore up and down that the Bidens have in no way relaxed the economic sanctions on Iranian oil. To reflect, uh, refresh your memory, please take a listen to this. We have not in any way relaxed um, our sanctions on Iranian oil, and we, are, we have sanctions on Hamas, on Hezbollah. Um, this is something we have been constantly looking at um, and using um, information that comes available to tighten sanctions. So here's my problem with that statement. A couple of years ago, Iran was producing about 400,000 barrels of oil a day. Today, they're producing about three and a half million barrels per day, and they're on their way to four million barrels per day, according to industry observers. Now, where'd that come from? You don't suppose sanctions were lifted so they could sell it, do you? Now, wait a minute. Some more numbers. Iran has a favorite customer, China. In 2020, Iran sold China roughly six and a half billion dollars worth of oil. Six and a half billion. Then the next year, Biden's first year in 2021, that mysteriously jumped to 23 billion dollars. Then last year, in 2022, that oil sale mysteriously leaped to 30 billion dollars. Well, where'd all that come from? If we didn't lift the sanctions, how come they're producing and selling all that oil? Odd story, isn't it? Now, what's this worth to Iran? Anyway, at least, at least another, 600, uh, another $60 billion worth of revenue. $60 billion, okay? The $6 billion controversy for the hostage exchange, small beer. The oil sales is everything. Now, as the Mideast's greatest state sponsor of terrorism, $60 billion may be financing Hamas, Hezbollah, they're all aiming to destroy Israel. That's a likely guess, don't you think? U.S. intelligence is actually telling us Iran didn't fund or plan or mastermind this hideous Hamas massacre of Gaza? Really? While Ali Baraka, who's a Hamas big shot, was telling Russian TV that our allies, quote, our allies are those that support us with weapons and money, First and foremost, it is Iran that is giving us money and weapons, end quote. Where'd that Iranian money come from? Energy sales. Well, how are all those energy sales possible? A relaxation of sanctions. That's how. Now, one more factoid. Iranian foreign exchange reserves, they were about $4 billion three years ago. Today, miraculously, their foreign exchange position is estimated to be about 70 billion dollars worth. Well, where'd they get all that money? You guessed it. A relaxation of sanctions. Now, here's a quote from my long-term pal, foreign policy expert Elliot Abrams, writing in the National Review. I will quote, Hamas depends heavily on Iranian funding. Iran was broke when Donald Trump left office, but is now pretty flush in cash. That's not just because of the recent deal for U.S. hostages, but because the Biden administration has not been enforcing U.S. oil sanctions, end quote. Now, I'm going to get a little technical just for a second, folks. Hang on. It's not going to be painful, I promise. First, the Congress, on numerous occasions, has mandated economic sanctions on Iran, Venezuela, Russia, Hezbollah. That's the law. Now, second, there are two kinds of sanctions. Stay with me on this. One is primary sanctions that prohibit citizens and companies of the sanctioning country from engaging with any sanctioned country. Think U.S. and Russia, post-Crimea and now post-Ukraine. Okay, that's direct. Second, there's something called secondary sanctions. That stops third parties from banking or engaging in commerce with the sanctioned country. Recent U.S. sanctions against Iran illustrate this example. U.S. secondary sanction gave banks around the world a choice. Either stop dealing with Iranian banks or you lose access to the entire U.S. dollar financial system, which is over 90% of world's transactions. That's tough stuff. The secondary sanctions 
It's not just the SWIFT system, which is the messaging system about transactions. It means that, for example, this is just an example. If France bought oil from Iran, France would be cut off from the entire U.S. dollar system. France would be cut off from something called the Fed wire, that's the Federal Reserve wire, or in the private banking system, France would be cut off from something called the clearinghouse. The execution of these sanctions is all monitored by the Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Asset Control, or OFA. Now, if the Biden administration were implementing primary and secondary sanctions on Iran, then the Iranian outlaws wouldn't be producing 4 million barrels a day, wouldn't be selling over 30 billion worth of exports to China, wouldn't be accumulating some 70 billion worth of foreign exchange reserves. Trust me on this. So Janet Yellen's telling us a big fib when she denies that sanctions haven't been relaxed. They have been. Kind of similar to her earlier fib that there's no inflation. Remember that one? The reality, Congress has mandated the tools to keep Iran in poverty and thus deny Hamas at any financing to cut off babies' heads or murder grannies in bed. Trouble is, the Bidens won't execute the congressional law. We will talk about this later in the show with Senator Kevin Kramer uh, and Senator Marco Rubio as well. This is such an important issue. It's time to starve Iran.